Congratulations, MIT, on getting to this stage in your study. I encourage you to stay the course. It's going to be well worth it. So in this training module, we're going to unpack exegesis. Say it with me. Exegesis. Exegesis. Got it? Exegesis. So it simply means to explain, to clarify, to interpret, particularly religious or biblical text. So again, it is to explain, clarify, interpret, particularly religious or biblical text. That is the definition of exegesis. So a person who does biblical exegesis is sometimes called an exegete. Do you want to become an exegete? I consider myself somewhat of an exegete because I absolutely love exegesis. So pay close attention and enjoy this journey in the study of exegesis if you want to become an exegete. So for me, this is where the fun and adventure of biblical study begins. I absolutely love exegesis. I do. I really, really do. Uh, so I love the exegetical study and I enjoy having been involved in uh, in that study in my early uh, time of salvation. So have you ever been in a conversation where someone has recreated the details or events of an encounter or conversation that you had and then you hear the story going in a different way, different from how it actually happened. And then you say, that's not how it went. That's not quite how the story happened. And then sometimes, like me, would say, if you're going to tell the story, tell it right. So I can only imagine the authors of the Holy Writ making that same statement. If you're going to tell the story, tell it right. So we have to learn exegesis in order to tell the story right. So in my spiritual development, uh, I was familiar with term. I was not familiar with terms like hermeneutics and exegesis. Uh, this may be your first in-depth study of these terms as well. And so you're in safe company because I know exactly how you feel. Uh, so let's take this journey together on this study. No judgment here. So let me define hermeneutics for you. Hermeneutics is the principle of interpretation, how to search out the context. So let me tell you again, let me say it again. Hermeneutics is how to search out the meaning of the text. Got it? Let's tell you how to do it. So exegesis is applying those search principles. Exegesis is applying the search principles. So hermeneutics is the theory that guides and drives exegesis. Exegesis is the practice, the doing, and the processes for determining what the author's intended meaning of the text really is. Let me say that for you again. Exegesis is the practice, the doing, the processes for determining the author's intended meaning of the text. Okay, got it. So Dr. Mark Strauss of Bethel Seminary in San Diego and also from BibleTraining.com defines exegesis like this. And I love his, de his definition. He says, we take steps to cross the bridge from our contemporary culture back to the original context of the biblical authors, only to come back across the bridge and then rightly apply those principles. Let me say that again. So we take steps to cross the bridge from our contemporary culture back to the original author's context of the text, only to come back across the bridge and then rightly apply the principles. Got it? So my first encounter with exegetical study was, I was about 15 years old, and I was raised in a very stern Pentecostal church uh, with very strict rules and guidelines for how to live holy, how to live saved uh, back in the 1970s, 1980s. And I sincerely accepted the Lord at the age of 11, you all. I really loved Jesus and wasn't playing. And I was intent on living this perfect life in the sight of God and to my pastors and to my family. So whatever we read in the Bible, whatever we read in the scriptures, we took very literal at face value and enforced it just like that. We didn't 
change one jot or one tittle. That's what they used to tell us. We read it and we did exactly what it says. So in my quest as a young believer to become all in for the Lord, I was as a supporter of Christian television and I fell in love with the PTL club. Anybody remember the PTL club with Jim and Tammy Faye Baker? I loved Jim and Tammy Faye Baker of the PTO Club. So I became a monthly partner, paying my $10 or $15 a month, whatever it was. And there were some benefits and perks to being a member of the PTO Club. And one of them was receiving a PTL Bible. And although I'd already read the Bible through, you know, did the yearly Bible plan, I was excited to read it from the PTL Bible. So now I think I was excited to read it from the Bible because the Bible was from popular televangelists. I was a teenager, so don't judge me. I was a teenager. Uh, but what I noticed when I got that Bible, you all, the first time I noticed the reference column in the middle of the pages that showcased word meanings, additional scripture passages, uh, uh, directory to maps and concordance and commentary. Now, I'm not saying that this feature was not in other Bibles that I had or other Bibles that I read, but I never noticed it. It could have been my age. Like I said, I was about 15 or 16, but I have no recall of them even bringing my teachers of the word ever even bringing attention to that layout in the Bible. They never said pay attention to that middle margin because it's going to teach you how to cross reference scriptures and how to get the full use of context of the scripture. And so what I learned from that was that we had been taking and using scripture out of context because we did not study. We read a lot but study was minimal. So when we understand the meaning of the text, we are better able to apply its principles properly. So the process of exegesis is to determine the author's intended meaning of the text. So I'm sure you've heard people say that the Bible contradicts itself. You know, the Bible says one thing in this passage and says something polar opposite. How can you believe in a God that doesn't know what he really means? The Bible contradicts itself and, the, and God is contradicting himself. So what I know is that these wonderful people had not heard or had any knowledge or ever been introduced to hermeneutics and exegesis, just as I had not as a young believer. So is exegesis biblical? Yes, exegesis is biblical. In the words of Pastor John Hanna, let's go Bible. Second Timothy 2 and 15 says, uh, Paul was instructing Timothy to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And guess what? That instruction applies to us today. We are charged to do the exact same thing. Handle God's word rightly. So in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, it gives us the order for learning to handle God's word rightly. For Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and rules in Israel. So there are three points here. You saw me with my fingers. <laughs> Number one is to study the word, put the work in, study the word. Number two was to do and practice the word, put it in action in your own life. And then you can, number three, teach the word. So study is a lot because Ecclesiastes 12 and the B clause of verse 12 says, much study is a weariness of the flesh. That's Ecclesiastes 12 and 12, the B clause. So yes, it is physically and mentally taxing to do a lot of study, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it because you'll come to understand the author's intended message. So in order to do that, we must ask the questions, who, what, why, and when of the text? Who is the audience? Who is the text referring to? Who is it referencing? When did the message occur? What was the season? What was the time of the year? What was the event? What was going on? What is the message to the audience or the characters? What is this? Why is this message relevant to the audience or to the characters? Why is this message relevant to the audience or characters? So in reading biblical texts, 
it's obvious from the stories and parables of and the scenes of the backdrops that this was an agricultural society. We hear a lot about farming and fishing and cattle. So I personally was familiar with the agricultural agricultural perspective because of my family's farm life in Mississippi. So when he talked about farm life, I could relate. However, I lived in Chicago. And so I was better acquainted with the industrial society of factories and warehousing and trucking and transportation. Our younger generation though, and nowadays our millennials are more familiar with the technological society. They are more into their computers, their laptops, their cell phones, gaming systems and devices, apps, that kind of thing. So they won't be able to relate to the agricultural or even the industrial perspectives and lifestyles. Therefore, exegesis is very important because it helps us to keep perspective of the main idea of the author's intended message while also giving us a look at the transferable principles. Let me say that again. Exegesis is very important because we are then able to keep the perspective of the author's main idea, the author's main point, the author's intended message, while looking at it and being able to transfer the principles of the message to today's life. Does that make sense? You got it? So keep in mind that good exegesis should provide a deeper understanding of the story and then enhance our personal relationship and encounters with our God. We're not just looking to be Bible experts or you know great biblical scholars, or are we? I'm not looking for that. I think it's important that we want to grow in our faith and in the knowledge of God as the Holy Spirit brings clarity to our study. Amen? So there are many principles used to provide good biblical exegesis. Here are a few. I'm only going to share a few with you because if you study, if you look, you'll see that there are many principles. Here are some of those principles. They are grammatical, literal, historical, sociocultural, and many more. So sometimes we hear the scriptures in eisegesis context. So now here I go, introducing a whole other word to you. What is eisegesis? Eisegesis is reading a meaning into the text that is not there. Unfortunately, in today's society, in today's world, we still hear that a lot. So exegesis is to pull out the real meaning. Exegesis is to pull out the real meaning of the author's intended uh, the meaning that the author intended. Eisegesis is to include my, I, my message into the context. So the true context is to realize that eisegesis alludes to I, which brings little value in exegesis. Keep in mind that what was written in first century in the Eastern civilization more than likely has a different contextual meaning to our contemporary Western culture, as we referenced previously when we talked about the different societies. So we talk about the other societal perspectives of agricultural, industrial, and technological. So got to make sure that we tell it the way the author meant it and then transfer those principles. So how do we exegete text? So there is no exact approach to proper exegesis, However, I will share a few tips for answering the who, what, why, and when of an exegetical text. Number one, we want to identify the genre. What is the genre? Is it from a historical narrative? Is it poetry? Is it an epistle? So depending on how the text is written, written that's how you'll gain a clearer insight and perspective on what the author is saying. If this is an epistle or a letter, is it written to a group of people or to an individual? Is it history being told or shared in the text? So that'll help you frame, you know, exactly what's going on with the text. Then you want to number two, identify the original text's exact wording. What does this verse say in its original language? So if it's Old Testament, take note of this, the original languages in the Old Testament were Hebrew and Aramaic. Hebrew and Aramaic, I bet you may not have known that. 
If it's New Testament, the original language is Greek. Okay, got it? New Testament, Greek, Old Testament, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Number three, you want to translate the original language and then compare in translations like the NIV, the New King James Version, the Amplified, the New Living Translation, the English Standard uh, Version of the Bible. Number four, we want to understand how the author told the story with historical and cultural details, such as Old Testament family dynamics and New Testament racial interactions, for example. Number five, Perform word studies of key phrases and concepts. Some words and phrases have dual meanings. Uh, let's take, for instance, the word power. So power can have two, di two different definitions. Let me just give you two. So it can be, de can be defined as delegated authority, the right to exercise and influence authority. That's exousia. Or strength and force of God which is dunamis. So you've heard exousia power and dunamis power. And so depending on the context and the intended message of the author, you will know how to use the word in proper context. So go back and review these steps. I promise they'll help you. Go back in and review these. I'm sure they're going to help you. So there are four theological disciplines. One, Biblical theology, biblical theology connects salvation themes by integrating the text of the Old and New Testaments, ending with Christ as Savior and Lord. That's the biblical theology. It's all about being saved, bottom line. Number two, historical theology is by evaluating commentary that is produced by theologians who share their understanding of the Bible and theology via commentary. Number three, systematic theology is how a passage theologically aligns with the entire Bible. And then number four is the practical theology, which is applying the text of the scripture to your life, in your church life, and in the world. So I know this is a lot. <laughs> I know it's been overwhelming and your mind is probably racing. So be sure to review this lesson as much as you need to and then expand your study upon it. I promise you're going to find great value in it, along with the usefulness in preparing your teaching and preaching test, texts. Uh, so just just don't, don't get wrapped up in the, you know, oh my God, this is a lot. It's new. But if you want to grow in your exegetical study, I strongly encourage purchase and use of some of these popular exegetical biblical commentary commentaries. To me, they are vital for every preacher and every teacher so that we are rightly dividing, rightly handling the word of God. So number one is the new international commentary on the Old and New Testaments. The new international commentary on the new on the Old and New Testaments. That's the first one I suggest. The second one is the Expositor's Bible Commentary. Expositor's Bible Commentary. The third recommendation is the Evangelical Exegetical Commentary. The Evangelical Exegetical Commentary. And then number four is the Zondervan Exegetical Commentary on the New Testament. So there are many others, but I strongly, if you want to become an exegete, I strongly, strongly encourage you to make the investment in your spiritual and word development by purchasing and using exegetical commentaries to help you with your study. So there is also a digital option called the Logos Bible Software. It comes highly recommended. I've not used it, but it comes highly recommended for in-depth study and Bible, uh, Bible study and sermon prep. And so the creators of this software boast that if you take on this, if you study this software, you'll never, ever take another verse out of context again. So guess what I'm going to do? Invest in that study. <laughs> so imagine being able to live the abundant life that God has given us by rightly dividing the word and gaining that that perspective of living whole and living holy and then bringing glory to God. 
So I want to thank you for your attention. I pray that this has been insightful for you. I pray that this has been illuminating for you. I pray that the eyes of your understanding are open to how to look at God's word in its accurate and most uh, contextual form and that you're able to share the word of God from a place that brings you joy and from a place that enlightens and illuminates and empowers others. So uh, enjoy the homework journey, enjoy it and watch God unfold his life, the life that he has for you to you. God bless you. Be encouraged, MIT. I'm rooting for you. I'm pulling for you. God bless you.